Hi friends! Okay, so this week on Wednesday, April 22nd is Earth Day. So for that, to celebrate, I'm going to read one of my favorite books called The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. Okay, what I need you guys to do is get a paper or a pencil or a pen and we're going to make a chart. While we read the book, there's some things we're going to focus on today. So we're going to focus on the character, the setting, problem, solution, genre, and theme. So if you guys could pause the video right now and make six squares and label it, that would be awesome. Go ahead and do that now. Okay, and pause it because you're right. Two, one. Hi friends. Okay, this week is Earth Day on Wednesday, April 22nd. So in order to celebrate Earth Day with y'all, I'm gonna read one of my favorite stories called The Lorax. And it's The Lorax by Dr. Seuss, which we celebrated a whole week of him. So we are very familiar with Dr. Seuss. Okay, but we're as we're reading, we're gonna focus on some story elements today. So you need to get a pin or a pencil and a piece of paper and you're going to draw six squares and the bottom okay we're gonna have six squares and we're gonna label them character setting problem solution genre and theme so go ahead and pause the video right now and make your six squares and label them character setting problem solution genre and theme and then we'll go ahead and get started with the story all right here we go the lorax by dr seuss at the far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds ever sing excepting old crows in the street of the lifted lorax and deep in the grickle grass some people say if you look deep enough you can still see today where the lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted that lorax away what was the lorax and why was it here? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town where the grickle grass grows, the old Wensler still lives here. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the Wensler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkin on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkin cold under the roof where he makes his own clothes out of myth muffered moof. And on special dank nights in August, he peeks out of the shutters. And sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you perhaps if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes it, makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in a snuff, his secret strange hole in his grooveliest glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell you are for your ears alone. Slup, down slups the whisper my phone to your ear and the old once whispers are not very clear since they have to come down, down through a snurgly hose and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Oh, it's so pretty. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the Swami Swans rang out in space. One morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, oh, the truffle trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffle trees. 
mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. Oh, pay attention to the setting right now. It's beautiful here. All the trees and the animals. Look how happy they are. And under the trees I saw brown barbaloots frisking about in their barbaloot suits as they played in the shade and, are, and ate truffle fruits. From the ripperless pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, oh, those truffle trees, those truffle trees, all my life I'd been searching for truffle as a, such as these. The touch of the tufts was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do, and I unloaded my cart. So if we notice, Wunzler Wagon. So we already have one of the main characters of the story is the Wunzler. So I'm going to go ahead and stop, and I'm going to get my first box filled in character, and I'm going to write Wunzler. Once is O-N-C-E. L-E-R, Wensler. So he is the narrator of the story. He's the one telling the story. We also notice his name right here at the top, the Wenslers. In no time at all, I had built a small shop and then I chopped down a truffle a tree with just one chop. And with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft nuft and I knitted a thneed. The instant I finished, I heard a gazump. I looked, and I saw something pop out of the stump. Of the tree I chopped down is what sort of a man. Describe him. Huh, that's hard. I don't know if I can. He was uh, shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, achoo! I am the Lorax and I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffle trees? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. The thing is a thneed. A thneed's find something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat, but it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool thneed. But the very next minute I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute a chop came along and he thought the thneed I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the larks. Ha! You poor silly guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. Alright, so we have our other main character right now who is the Lorax. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to write in my character chart Lorax capital L because it's a name, O-R-A-X, Lorax. I repeat, I repeat, cried the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him, be quiet if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all, built a radio phone and I put in a quick call. I called my brothers and aunts and uncles and said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wensler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Niche, turn left at Wee Cam and sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wensler family was working full tilt. We are all knitting thneeds just as busy as bees to the sound of the chopping of truffle trees. And there's their factory. Then, oh baby oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked up four truffle trees at one smacker. We were making the needs four times as fast as before. And that Lorax, ha, he didn't show up anymore. 
Alright, so if we've been paying attention, the setting is outside. If we keep looking, the setting, the main setting is outside. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to write outside is a compound word. So I have out, O-U-T, and side, S-I-D-E, outside. But the next week, oh, he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots who played in the shade in their barbaloot suits and happily lived eating truffle of fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, that's not enough truffle of fruit to go around. And my poor barbaloots are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. Oh, look at them, they're so sad. They loved living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried and he sent them away. I, the Wensler, felt sad as I watched them all go, but business is business and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I really meant no harm, I must truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads of the needs I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more the needs, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Now you can start looking. There used to be a lot of trees, and now about very many. Then again, that Lorax, he came back. I was fixing some pipes when the old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax, <coughs> he coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed, got you, and he sniveled and snargled. He sniffed, once lurk, he cried with a gruffless croak. Once lurk, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swami swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in their throats. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smogged up around here. Okay, so we might have the problem of the story by now. Hopefully you figured it out. Okay, the problem is he's destroying the homes of the animals or destroying the animal's habitat. So the problem is destroying, D-E-S-T-R-O-Y, and then destroying, I-N-G, I -N -G, destroying, V T H E animals A N I M A L S home home H O M E or their habitat destroying the animals home or habitat okay and he's doing that by polluting and chopping down trees What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about this gluppity glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, maybe making gluppity glup, but also sloppity schlop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old Wensler man, you. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum for the gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off, oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. Ugh, that's gross. And then I got mad, oh, I got terribly mad. I yelled at that Lorax, now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, and say bad, bad, bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your, your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering, and biggering, and biggering, and biggering, turning more truffle of trees into the needs, which everyone, everyone I say needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack. 
of an ax on a tree, then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle a tree of them all. So remember back at the beginning of the story, it was beautiful with truffle trees and animals, and now there's no animals and no truffle trees. No more trees, no more thieves, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke-smuggered stars. Now all that was left neath the bad-smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing. He just gave me a glance. He just gave me a very, very sad backward glance. And as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants, I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was a long, long ago, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away through the years while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the Wensler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So catch! calls the Wensler. He lets something fall. It's a truffle seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffle seeds. And the truffle trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffle, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it with fresh air. Get, grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may just come back. The end. Okay, so the solution of the story, how do we solve the problem? Well, we can clean up the water. That's one solution. Clean up water. We could also grow plants. Grow plants. And really, it's just taking care of our environment. Okay, so we have to take care of our environment. Now, let's look at the genre. The genre is the type of story it is. Okay, so this story, were the characters real? Mm, not really. Do we really have trees like this? No. So this is a fiction story. So under genre, we're gonna write fiction. F-I-C-T-I-O-N. Okay, so the theme is the lesson we can learn. So even though this is a fiction story, okay, we can still learn something from this story. Okay, so what kind of message did the author leave for us? Well, I think he's wanting us to clean up the world and protect our earth. So I'm gonna write protect our earth. Protect is P-R-O-T-E-C-T. -E protect our, O-U-R. And Earth, we're going to need to start that with a capital letter because it is a name, E-A-R-T-H, protect our Earth. So, boys and girls, your challenge this week is to protect our Earth by uh, doing one of the solutions, either going outside, clean up the water, pick up trash, okay, plant a seed from a fruit, anything that will help our Earth be clean and not get all gross like in the Lorax. All right, I miss y'all so much. I love y'all. Have a great week. Bye.